let's just take a little quick aside and go into the mechanism here because the mechanism is different than the protein induced mechanism that involves glucagon. And it's just a review. And if you haven't heard this before, it's totally cool. Let's just go through it because quite honestly, it's one of my favorite things of all time. This is one of the most fascinating uh, biological mechanisms that I've ever learned. And it explains so much about why eating fat is not a good idea living with diabetes, any form of diabetes. So if you look on your screen, if you're watching the video right now, you'll see uh, an image that came directly from our book. We spent months creating this image because it is very involved and it really walks you through every step in the insulin signaling pathway that's negatively inhibited by the presence of fat. The first thing that happens on the bottom left of your screen, if you're watching, is that fat comes into the cellular environment through fatty acid transport proteins in the membrane and then gets pl placed into what's called a lipid droplet. You can think of a lipid droplet as basically just being a place where fat likes to congregate because fatty acids are fat soluble and these fat soluble components are immersed in a swimming pool that is water soluble. Water soluble things and fat soluble things don't like to interact with each other. So when there's fat soluble material, it literally congregates and creates what's called a micelle structure, which is just a three-dimensional sphere where all of the hydrophobic substances can hang out in um, and, and be electronically and chemically stable. So this lipid droplet begins to grow over the course of time as more fat appears in your blood because you ate a high fat diet. So this lipid droplet begins to grow. And as it grows, there's a couple of breakdown products or a couple of uh, derivatives that, that, that then starts to impair the intracellular side of the insulin receptor. So these lipid metabolites go and they, they cause alterations to the insulin receptor from the inside of the cell. And they inhibit this thing called IRS1. IRS1 is insulin receptor substrate one. Long story short, don't remember it. All you have to know is that it makes the insulin receptor less functional. As soon as that happens, the GLUT4 vesicles that are the little spaceships that get put up into the, in, close to the cellular membrane that are supposed to be little spaceships that allow glucose to get inside of the cell. In fact, they're required for glucose to get inside of the cell. They cannot translocate or move to the cell surface because the IRS1 molecule is the first messenger that goes and relays that signal. So if IRS1 can't do its job, then the GLUT4 vesicles don't go to the surface. And as a result of that, glucose has nowhere to go. So glucose gets trapped and it stays inside of your blood. In addition to that, these, this enlarged lipid droplet starts to create free radicals at the level of the mitochondria. The mitochondria gets annoyed. The mitochondria starts to produce more of these reactive oxygen species that becomes an inflammatory signal. And now the mitochondrial network is in a state of distress. As a result of that, less glycogen becomes uh, usable as a fuel source. The glycogen granule begins to get smaller. And you can see that this, this process unfolds in a negative direction simply because there's excess fat coming into the cellular environment that causes multiple different uh, cellular dysfunctions. So again, if you, if you want more information about that and you want to learn a little bit more, pick up a copy of the Mastering Diabetes book. It's got more than 3,000 reviews. It's got a 4.6 rating on Amazon. It was a New York Times bestseller. And uh, quite honestly, it was very fun to write. It took three years. And uh, it's sort of the opus magnum up to this point. Okay, so take home message. Make no mistake about it. Increased fat increases your level of insulin resistance. It causes cellular dysfunction at the cellular, at the, at the cellular level inside of liver and muscle. And as a result of that, it causes blood glucose to get elevated and insulin requirements to go up. But what I want to drive home here is that we know that lipids do this. We've got plenty of scientific evidence. We now know that protein has a similar mechanism that actually causes your blood glucose to get higher and causes your insulin requirements to get higher. And as a result of that, the two of them are additive. So if you're eating a diet that's low in carbohydrate because that's what you've been told by your doctor or that's what you've been told by someone else living with diabetes, and you're trying to limit your carbohydrate intake because you're making the assumption that carbohydrate is bad for you, 
chances are you're eating more fat and more protein. You're literally eating the two macronutrients which cause insulin resistance in an additive manner. That's why people end up getting frustrated. That's why people lose weight today and gain insulin resistance tomorrow. That's why people lower their blood glucose today and increase their A1C tomorrow. This is the problem with diabetes. There is too much short-term focus and not enough understanding of long-term consequences. Okay. Now, if you go to the research one more time, because why? We love the research. It's awesome. Bell et al., another paper that's absolutely seminal in this world, demonstrated that the addition of either 20 grams of dietary fat or 40 grams of dietary fat or 60 grams of dietary fat to a single meal causes a significant elevation in blood glucose between two and five hours after the meal. Okay, so in the same way that we see the same type of thing happening in the protein world when you're consuming too much protein, you can see on the screen here that when you consume 20 grams of fat in one meal, you can see that those who ate 20 grams of fat had the blood glucose profile shown by the dotted line. Their average blood glucose is elevated, their peak blood glucose is elevated, and the area under the curve is significantly larger than the people who had no added fat to their meal. So this is fundamentally important because this is what enables us to understand that adding fat can actually lead you in the wrong direction. If instead you add 40 grams of fat to your meal, you end up with a slightly higher blood glucose deviation. If instead you add 60 grams of fat to your meal, now you have a, a standard deviation that's even higher. And as a result of that, blood glucose becomes harder and harder to control. So this, my friends, is extremely interesting. You can't eat protein and fat for free because it increases postprandial blood glucose values and increases postprandial insulin requirements. Do you see the pattern that I'm seeing? Do you see the repeatable results that many different research groups have presented that show the negative consequences of eating fat in your diet and the negative consequences of eating protein. If you don't see it, that's totally cool. But if you do, then you start to see exactly what we are recognizing that happens inside the research. It happens in real people. And you can even make it happen inside of your body in one meal. Hey, I'm Cyrus Kambata, co-creator of the Mastering Diabetes Method, which has helped thousands of people reverse insulin resistance and take control of their lives, no matter what type of diabetes they're living with. Do you want to know all of our tips, tricks, and secrets? They're right here in our New York Times bestselling book, Mastering Diabetes, which you can find at masteringdiabetes.org slash book. If you're ready to master diabetes, pick up a copy today. You won't be disappointed. Now, we know that this happens in people living with diabetes or people who are at risk for diabetes, people who have uh, blood glucose abnormalities. But guess what? This also happens in people that don't have diabetes. And that's why it's so important because most people believe that if they don't have diabetes or whatever, it doesn't really matter. This is only applicable to people who are already in a state of distress. So like, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do and uh, hopefully it won't cause diabetes into the future. But the research actually demonstrates that the same dynamics that we're talking about in people with diabetes also happens in people that don't have diabetes. And this is fascinating. The paper you see on your screen right here that was published in Atherosclerosis, Thrombosis, and Vascular Biology by Gerald Reven, phenomenal researcher. This, this group, uh, I know them personally, very smart individuals. What they've demonstrated in this particular paper on the next uh, slide that we'll see here is that when they take a look at people who are living in a hyperinsulinemic state, Okay, that means that they're living in a state where there's excess glucose, excuse me, excess insulin in their blood uh, over a 24-hour period. You can quantify how hyperinsulinemic is insulinemic someone is based off of a simple blood test. So you can go and get a blood test, and that can basically tell you what your average uh, insulin concentration is in your blood. And they classify people into one of four groups. You're either low, medium, high or very high. 
And what they demonstrate here on the graph on your left is that the people who are in the low, medium, and high quartiles uh, are actually uh, have a, a low rate of heart disease. Somewhere around 2% of those individuals will go on to develop heart disease. But if you're in the highest quartile, which means that you're in the very high category because there's excess insulin in your blood because you're eating foods that causes your insulin concentration to go up, well, guess what? Your risk for heart disease climbed from approximately a two or two and a half north of an 8%. Okay, that's a triple. That's a tripling in your risk for the development of heart disease. That's a really big deal. Now, if you look at it from a different perspective and you say, all right, I'm going to classify people into one of three buckets. They're either low insulin resistance, medium insulin resistance, or high insulin resistance. What you'll find is that the people who are in the highest category have a 14% risk for the development of coronary heart disease versus the people who are in the bottom two tertiales who have a risk that's as low as 2%. So no matter how you slice it, whether there's excess insulin in your blood or whether you're living in an insulin resistant state, truth be told, they're one and the same. Your risk for the development of heart disease is very high. And it's important that you know that. And once again, this is in people who are not diabetic. This is in people who don't even have prediabetes. And this is why it's important because your risk for heart disease is directly related to the amount of insulin inside of your blood and to your level of insulin resistance. Now, Colin, if you can go to the next slide here, there's another paper in which they, the researchers found a very similar uh, result, which is that hyperinsulinemia, again, excess insulin in your blood causes a significant increase in the risk for the development of heart disease. Now, this was a very interesting paper because uh, these researchers took individuals that were working at one factory, a pasta factory in Italy, and they sampled their uh, blood glucose and insulin in the year 1981. And then they followed them up again and measured more carbohydrate and glucose dynamics in between the years 1993 to 1996. So effectively, they measured them approximately 15 years apart from each other, early 80s, mid 90s. And they tried to determine what is like, what percentage of the people in the mid 90s actually suffered a heart attack. And if there was any information back from the 80s that could have told them that, they could have predicted whether or not these people would develop uh, heart disease. And guess what? Of all the things that they had measured, they found out that the people who were living in a hyperinsulinemic state back in the early 1980s were the ones who were at the highest risk for heart disease in the mid 90s. Let me say that again. They put people into four buckets, low, medium, high, and very high insulin resistance. In the same way that Raven found the exact same result, which is that the people who are in the very high bucket have a significantly increased risk for heart disease, uh, they found the exact same thing in this paper, that people who are living in the highest level of insulinemia, hyperinsulinemia, are at the highest risk for a future cardiac event about 10 to 15 years into the future. So no matter how you slice it, being hyperinsulinemic today increases your risk for the development of heart disease and a future cardiac event in the future. I know you don't want that. I don't want that. And that's why it's very important that we understand that there's a direct connection, not even an indirect connection, but a direct connection between your level of insulin resistance today and your risk for a heart attack tomorrow. So if your level of, if the amount of protein that you're consuming on a daily basis is low or medium today, that can limit the amount of insulin resistance present in your body. And that's a good thing because it can protect you against the development of many chronic diseases, including heart disease into the future. And that's where we want to keep you low-ish protein intake, low-ish fat intake, that protects you in, from two different angles against the development of chronic diseases into the future. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. Answer some questions about yourself, and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. 
We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.